Hello, ballers! What's going on? It's Preacher and it's here. Finally, it's here. We're doing some Dis Priest. Yeah, hate on me all you want. I know I left this bad boy in the dust in 5.0 and 5.1. And quite frankly, it deserved it. The Dis Priest was hashtag dog shit. Uh, it was got good. It did get good in 5.1 and towards the end of 5.04, but quite frankly, the spec was so fucking boring to play that I just could not be interested in doing a guide for it. But it has had some changes in patch 5.2, some reworking, some thinking about it. So we've been playing Swoboost Wagons, our lovely Dis Priest here, and now we're going to bring that to you. I do have a cold, unfortunately, but, you know, the job must go on. The work must continue. Let's look at the Dis Priest, okay? Let's get over the towns. We're looking at Dis. We've got Powered Shield. Awesome. Spirit Shell, one minute cooldown. Divine Aegis, which we're going to be talking a little bit more about shortly. Penance and Power Word Barrier. Now, the idea here with Dis Priest is that we are a preventative source of play. We prevent damage. We put the big shields up. That's what we do. We stop things happening before they become a problem. And that's the style of thinking you should get into with your Dis Priest. A lot of people think about Dis Priest in terms of, lol, Atonement. What is Atonement, you might ask? That is the ability to do deeps, to do mad DPS, and do some healing at the same time. When you deal damage with Smite, Holy Fire, Penance, you instantly heal a nearby low health friendly target within 40 yards, which is pretty big, from the enemy target for 100% of the damage dealt. If the priest is healed for atonement, the effect is reduced by 50%. Atonement. So, people instantly loved atonement from past expansions, where they could essentially just DPS their way through content, while still putting out amazing healing. Throughout Kata, this was kind of a standard thing for Dis Priest, is just to go balls to the wall DPS, still put out very competitive healing whilst dealing damage. Very, very powerful class. Lots of people absolutely loved it. Uh, the problem now is it's actually a little bit manner expensive to do that, so we've got to break that habit and use Atonement in a way that really works. I want to talk about the spells a little bit. I think this is the only way we're really going to discuss the synergy that works with these. Dis Priest have... Not as many tools as a Holy Priest, but they can switch up their style of play very, very quickly. The big problem with Dis Priest right now is a lot of people don't know why certain things happen with their Dis Priest. If you want to be a good Dis Priest, you're going to have to understand what the fuck is actually going on. One thing to bear in mind are things like Train of Thought. Nobody ever checks past their spellbook, am I right? I'm right, okay? They see the spells, they stick them on the bar. When it gets to the passives, like, oh, whatever, I'm not doing my passives. Uh, <laughs> but these are the really important things, because this is how your class is working. Train of thought. When you heal with greater heal, the cooldown of your inner focus is reduced by five seconds. When you smite, the cooldown of your penance is reduced by five, a half a second. This is really important. This is really important. Train of Thought is one of the most powerful things you'll need to be aware of, as it actually directly influences how you can proceed through a fight and use and abuse different mechanics of your class. We have a lot of cooldowns as a Dis Priest. Let's go through them. We've got things like Mindbender, if you chose to take it. I recommend you do. Power Infusion. We have our, lo our level 90 ability, such as Cascade, like I've got right now, which always looks glorious. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, Inner Focus, which again gives a free critical strike heal. Our Spirit Shell we just talked about. All these abilities we have at our disposal. And of course, let's not forget Pain Suppression, reducing that damage on the tank, and of course, Power Word Barrier, the big titty shield called the titty shield for glorious sakes it's a big giant boob and protects us all from powerful powerful damage so things like train of thought directly influence them because that's how often we can use in a focus how often we can use penance grace increase our healing done our mastery increases the potency of our shields we get things like mysticism and these are all normal and rapture Rapture is kind of interesting. Okay, let's read Rapture. Removes the cooldown of Power Word Shield and reduces its mana cost by 25%. Allows us to be a little bit spammy with Power Word Shield. Bear in mind, if for 5.2, Power Word Shield is very, very powerful now. In addition, when your Power Word Shield is completely absorbed or dispelled, you are instantly energized with mana equal to 150% of your spirit. Excluding short-term spirit bonuses. This effect can only occur once every 12 seconds. Rapture is something that gets better and better and better every single fucking time you upgrade your gear because your spirit has increased. Okay? Rapture is super important in order to maintain good mana. Now, you're going to need a mod for this, guys. Okay? I use Tell Me When. 
I use a little add-on called Tell Me When, and there it is. This is my Rapture mod. Internal cooldown, Rapture, 12 seconds. Just like it says there, this effect can only occur every 12 seconds. Rapture, internal cooldown, 12 seconds, enabled, and then we're good. Now, what will happen is every time my powered shield is fully absorbed, this bar will start counting down from 12 to 0, and then I know I can proc Rapture again. A big style of play you guys are going to have to pick up is the ability to keep an eye on Rapture, and then decide whether or not it's worth recasting Power Word Shield. If you're using Power Word Shield just as a nice mana boost, you need to know when that Rapture is off cooldown, so you're not just wasting it, okay? Really important stuff, guys. Make sure you've got something going. There are other add-ons available. Just search one out, or use a Tell Me When like I've just showed you there. Uh, we have other things like Evangelism, okay? This is where your DPS atonement stuff comes in. So if I start doing some mad deeps as a Raider's Dummy, there we go. You can see I start stacking up Evangelism. One, two, three... Four, five, and when I get five, boom, Archangel. I get an extra 25% healing. This is something else you need to bear in mind. It's not just doing DPS for the sake of doing DPS healing, but you might need to do a tremendous amount of healing in the next few seconds, okay? You might need this coming. Holy shit, in 10 seconds, it's that phase of blah, blah, boss where I need to put out an ass ton of healing. You know what I want? I want 25% extra healing for that entire duration. That's where evangelism comes in. When you deal damage with your penance, smite, holy fire, you gain evangelism, stacking up to five times, and then that's going to directly increase your healing using Archangel. Increases the damage and healing done by your penance, smite, and holy fire spells by 4%, and reduces the mana cost. So you can instantly switch over to this. You've got instant cast holy fire now, guys. You should be aware of that. And four more spikes on top of that, getting increasingly cheaper with those stacks of evangelism. And then, boom, Archangel the crap out of it. Doesn't mean you have to Archangel instantly. You can keep this buff going. You can keep evangelism rolling until you need the Archangel. Do you understand what I'm saying there? What we can do is stack up five stacks of evangelism, and then we can call upon the power of the Archangel when we need it. Okay, so it's worth tracking your evangelism. We've got 18 seconds. It lasts 20 damn seconds, this bad boy. So you can keep it at five stacks. Okay, I've got my five stacks. My Archangel is ready whenever I want it. Okay, I've got 20 seconds to play with. Okay, now's the mega healing bit. Boom, Archangel the shit out of it. Now I'm going to put out some big badass healing. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Let's jump into our talents. Uh, things that I recommend for Dispriest, again, all situational dependent. All situational dependent. It really, really is it's entirely up to you. Void Tendrils is always kind of fun. Uh, especially certain bosses do actually take a benefit from Void Tendrils. But again, encounter specific. Body and Soul I absolutely love. I love Body and Soul. We're going to be casting shields all over the damn place. We're going to be telling our Holy Priest not to cast shields on themselves. And we can start pre-planning this. Body and Soul is that wonderful ability to help slow tanks and help really good tanks become even better. Uh, speeding them up every time we shield them. Mindbender. I love Mindbender. Our mana is going to be up and down like a yo-yo as a Disc Priest, okay? We have so much mana management involved that Mindbender on a regular cooldown is super handy. Really, really like it. Angelic Bulwark, just saving your ass, okay? Desperate Prayer is also way, way up there. Two minute cooldown instantly heals you. It's your, oh, I'm about to die button. Go ahead and Desperate Prayer out of there. I like Angelic Bulwark, uh, just for when random moments when people just randomly give me. But Desperate Prayer also in there. Power Infusion, I don't even think it's a choice, okay? I really don't think it's a choice for a Disc Priest whether or not you take Power Infusion. Infuses the Priest with power, increasing spell casting speed by 20%, damage by 5%, and reducing the mana cost of all spells by 20%. That works so well. So, so well. Every single aspect of Power Infusion synergizes beautifully with the Discipline Priest. It really does. Because remember, with Atonement, our da damage directly correlates to the healing we put out. We don't want to waste mana getting stacks of Archangel. We don't want to do that. Power Infusion. We also want to stack that Evangelism really quickly. Having 20% extra spell casting speed on top of that is absolutely awesome. Power Infusion, a wonderful tool. I, I just don't see how you can choose something else. Somebody will no doubt argue in the comments. That's fine. Cascade. Uh, Cascade is generally the go-to for raiding. There's no doubt about that. Cascade is generally the go-to spell for raiding, especially if you're up to 25, man. Divine Star, really nice for your five, mans, okay? When people are a little bit more grouped up. All depends on your situation. Pick and choose what you like. Effectively, they work kind of similarly, so there's no worries there in what you're picking. There's no real wrong choice. However, certain ones will benefit depending on what the hell your raid is doing at the time. If your raid is spread out all over the place, Cascade jumps and jumps and jumps and finds people to heal. Divine Star, there's some little pre-planning to it. 
If I can just learn it quickly. I can't do that until... Well, Cascade's on cooldown. I'll do that shortly. And Halo, of course, if they're really, really, really widespread out and you can kind of plan how far you stand from people. All good. All good stuff. Quick look at glyphs. Now, glyphs, you actually get quite a lot of choices as this, which is nice, okay? I like the penance while moving. If I have to penance, I want to be able to move. I liked being able to do that in a raid environment. So I can still cast something. Between our instant cast, Renew is pretty dog shit for Dis Priest. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but Prayer of Mending and Penance, really nice spells to be able to do on the move. We want to keep these bad boys on cooldown anyway. And if we're moving around, it gives us that extra choice of something useful such as Holy Fire and all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so we have Holy Fire. Now we add Penance to our repertoire of good, solid, useful spells to cast while we're moving around. Uh, Glyph of Smite. Your Smite spell inflicts an additional 20% damage against targets inflicted by Holy Fire. Of course, we're going to be using Holy Fire while we're, Holy Fire while we're smiting. Okay, That's just going to give you that extra little buff of damage and extra little buffs all around. I really like Glyph of Paramending as well. I tend to pom the tank. Mainly, uh, I tend to try and keep POM on the tank as on cooldown. If you're doing mad AoE healing, then maybe it's not as useful. But Glyph of POM, additional 60% uh, on the tank. I really, really like it. But if you're looking to do mad AoE healing, this is obviously going to let you down. So pick and choose, again, whatever you want. Some other ones that come into mind, though... You also have uh, Glyph of Powered Shield, where 20% of the absorb from your Powered Shield is converted into healing. A little bit nicer for the holy guys, a little bit nicer for the holy guys, but not terrible either. Uh, there's also the Glyph of, I think it's Holy Fire, if I'm absolutely correct. I think it's that one, yes. Increase the range of your Holy Fire and Smite. So if you are at max range, you have to move all the way back. Then, of course, you get the extra range from Holy Fire in order to continue to do your DPS Atonement spec, whatever it might be. Uh, I just want to show you this briefly. This is a nice little thing with Divine Star. I'm not sure if I can actually pull it off here. Uh, if I drag Divine Star around there. Divine Star travels out and then returns to you. So what we often have is players who are sort of congregated. If I put a barrier there... Imagine those are all the players in that area. And these other people over here. What you can actually do with Divine Star is kind of funky. Is you can actually make it come back to you. And I can't really do it here, unfortunately. Uh, but it will return back. In which case, you can actually move your position. Okay? It will return After it reaches its destination, it will return to you. So you can fire Divine Star from way over here. And move. And it will actually do an arc. So there's a little bit of pre-planning, a little bit of thought that goes into Divine Star that makes it just a little bit more effective. I like that. It just gives you a little something to do while you're thinking about that. Let's talk about our stats. Mr. Swobby Swaggins, again, we're rolling newbie gear so you guys understand exactly how it can go from good to bad. Uh, once you, If you can do things in this gear, you can do everything. So we've got just heroic 463 gear, a couple of our raid finders, I believe the neck, the belt, and I got the boots from Shah. Uh, well, our reforging is dead easy, okay? We want spirit, you want items with spirit. So as you can see, this guy is actually just reforging to spirit, as I don't really have the choice of gear on this guy, but that's fine. If I can do it in this gear, you guys can do whatever. Uh, what you're looking for is spirit cloth, obviously, and then you're going to reforge all the way to mastery. Your worst stat is haste, which kind of sounded weird for the healers, but there's a good reason for that. Uh, we're going to get into that now. What you want is as much mastery as possible, so your shields are better. Obvious, okay, our mastery buffs our shields, and we are a disc priest, doing a lot of shielding. Your next stat is crit. Okay, and that comes from your Divine Aegis. Divine Aegis is something that people don't really understand. And you need to. Divine Aegis is really, really cool. And in fact, will account for a ton of healing. I'm not sure how much healing I've got here. If I just go back to Garajal the Spirit Binder here. Um, Garajal the Spirit Binder, I've just done that for the other part of the video. If I look at Swobu, uh, you can actually see that 1.4 million of my healing there was Divine Aegis. Divine Aegis is actually a passive ability that people never read, which makes it kind of important, guys. It makes it important because it's doing it. It's the third biggest source of my healing is actually Divine Aegis there. What is Divine Aegis? Critical heals. Now you can see why we need the crit. Okay, mastery to buff our shields, crit on our gear because of Divine Aegis. Critical heals create a protective shield, working with our mastery, absorbing 100% of the amount healed instead of healing for twice as much. Last 15 seconds. Additionally, Power Word Shield has a chance equal to your critical effect, chance to absorb twice as much. Our crit heals create extra shields. Shields upon shields upon shields. That's how the Disc Priest works. Shields upon shields upon shields. And all our crits that we're getting from gear actually works out nicely so I, some people expect me was like why are you wearing a dps trinket look what this trinket does it's 847 intellect intellect's always prime for the disc priest no doubt when your spells deal damage you have a chance to gain three and a half thousand crit this is actually a really really good disc priest trinket 
It's really good. Really, really good, okay? Stupid good. Because what I could do with this trinket is I can pre-plan when I'm about to proc it. Okay, like there, predation. I've increased my crit chance. And if this works, I'll be more than pleased. Did I crit? I did, I crit. And now I've got a divine Aegis for 92,153 damage. Get shit on. Crit is important because that divine Aegis is huge. Okay, it is huge. Just realized I didn't focus on. Okay, commenters go crazy. But you get the idea. Those crit heals from Divine Aegis, absolutely enormous, okay? You're going 69,000 heals. Let's even get a crit off this bad boy. It's probably not going to happen without an inner focus, but that's all right. Let me pop an inner focus. Remember, guaranteeing that crit. Here comes the inner focus. Badumph, 93k heal, okay? 114,000 Divine Aegis on top of that. I just dropped a 200k heal in this crappy gear. That's why crit's important. Forget about haste for now, okay? There are certain haste break values, but really you're just arguing over nothing. You want to get your mastery up, then get your crit up, and of course wearing some nice spirit gear on top of that, and reforging away from haste wherever possible, and getting that mastery on there, and enchanting in just the same way. Do things like enchanted 107 mastery, mastery on boots, same thing. For your gemming, the main thing you want is your meta gem. So make sure it's the 432 spirit and 3% increased critical effect. Buffing everything we just talked about right there. And of course, gemming for spirit. There may be a little bit of mastery and spirit along the way. Nothing major. But that is a very simple gearing process for the Dis Priest. Again, you can reforge away from spirit if you're finding yourself very, very tidy. But with new content, you generally want to roll with as much spirit as possible. And if you're in low gear, gemming for pure spirit ain't no bad thing. Ain't no bad thing whatsoever. So, let's talk a little bit about your playstyle. Now, this can be switched up very, very easily. Uh, if we've got a tank, if we say we're the tank right here, uh, you're going to be generally keeping our shield on the tank and tracking Rapture. We talked about that earlier. You'll see that in the gameplay video which accompanies this, uh, as you'll see me actually tracking Rapture and keeping that cooldown. Your most efficient spells that you have in your arsenal, Pair of Mending and Penance. Super, super effective. When it comes to atonement style of play, Holy Fire on, remember your glyph is buffing that, Smite doesn't heal for that much. You can see it heals for crits 27k. Okay, or 23k. What does heal heal for? Let's have a look see. Takes a little bit longer. Heals for 33k. Smite is effectively, if you think about it in your mind as whether or not it's worth casting Smite in terms of actually healing, is like spamming heal faster. That's essentially what it is. It puts about around the same HPS. Your actual use is to get Archangel up. Okay. So you need to pre-plan this. Do I go Atonement here or do I not? The Disc Priest, is, especially for new players, isn't quite in the position of having something always to do. Which is a little bit of a shame. If you go straight up uh, Atonement and you just start going deeps, 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 deeps. Even with things like Power Infusion and Mindbender on cooldown. Not too uh, long after you start this, you're going to start running into mana issues prematurely. And that's not the best place to be, as you can imagine. Know your power. Your strength lies in the fact that you can absorb damage, okay? So you need to understand the fights. And if you understand the fights you're dealing with as Dis, you're going to have a really good time. Your main gameplay things, the basics. Keep Power Word Shield on a tank, especially someone that's going to be absorbing it and proccing that Rapture, giving you a ton of mana back. Try and keep your Prayer of Mending on cooldown. Try and keep your Penance on cooldown. And then you have to decide what you want to do. The last thing I think we need to talk about before we jump into anything is, remember, Inner Focus is Crit. It causes your Prayer of Healing to crit, which means you can Divine Aegis. That's the power of it, is the Divine Aegis. A lot of people, see, 33,000 damage just on the basics. Remember that Inner Focus is there. But Spirit Shell. Spirit Shell is seen by people who generally live in LFR as the cheesy way of doing AoE healing. Spirit Shell works in conjunction with a number of heals. Okay? Heal, Flash Heal, Great Heal, and Prayer of Healing cause Absorption Shields. Not just Prayer of Healing. What you can do as a Dis Priest is something pretty fucking amazing. Okay? 82,000 Spirit Shell. Spirit Shell enables you to effectively increase the health of players. That's what Absorbs do. You effectively increase the health of players. Okay? That's very, very important. Because there are a lot of abilities out there that can pretty much kill a tank even if he's topped off. This priests have an overwhelming ability to go ahead and increase the motherfucking health of the tank. That's amazing. Adding another 100, 200,000 health to a tank. If you think about Shara Fear and Thrash, where a tank could fall to his knees like a Thai Bride, 
then you can go ahead and spirit shell that bad boy before it actually lands and your tank has effectively a lot more health than what he appears to have okay now there's not much else i can show you from here in terms of gameplay so i'm going to jump into a raid and just want to show you a big spirit shell there for 160,000 damage I've increased my HP. Might look like 332k, but it's actually 490k thanks to that spirit shell. Spirit shell is so important, guys, okay? We've got a lot of cooldowns. Let's jump into some gameplay and show you how it all works out. All right, ballers? I'll see you soon.